So have you ever had this happen to you in Excel where you've created something cool and then shared it with your boss or colleagues and they say, hey, that's awesome, but there's actually an easier way to go about this. Well, that recently happened to me with this post on the gauge chart. After I published the video and post, my good friend John Peltier over at peltiertech.com said that for part of this build out, there's actually an easier way to do it. So first of all, thank you, John, uh, for your suggestion. And what I've done here is updated the video to include that new technique. So if you saw the previous video, the first half of this video is going to look similar where I explain what the gauge chart is and when to use it. But I've updated the second half of the video on how to build it out. So let's jump into the video. So you might've seen my recent post on these eight different types of progress charts. On that post, I asked which one was your favorite. And to my surprise, the gauge chart actually got a lot of votes. So in this video, I'm gonna explain what the gauge chart is, when to use it, and how to build it. All right, so here's our gauge chart. And before we begin, I should mention that I'll make this file available for free download, and I'll put a link in the description below where you can grab it and follow along. So the gauge chart, the first thing we wanna know is what is this chart? And essentially, it's just a chart that displays progress from zero to 100%. There's a lot of different ways, of course, with charts to display progress. If we jump back to the dashboard here, we can do that with the donut, bar chart, this dot chart, waffle chart, and so on. So that's why I was a bit surprised that the gauge got so many votes Votes, but I think that makes sense for a few reasons. One, it's just something we've all seen and are familiar with in cars uh, and things like that. And two, it's circular and our eyes are drawn to circles. So if you have a dashboard that just has a lot of bar charts and lines and kind of rectangular shapes on it, the gauge can be a great one to add in there to kind of break up some of those straight edges. Our eyes will naturally just be drawn to that. So we'll jump over to the gauge follow along sheet and build out the chart. On this sheet, we have a space over here on the left for the chart, and then we have the source data on the right. And I'll explain the source data as we build out the chart. So the first thing we're going to do is select the gray and color columns here for the source data. So I'm just gonna select this cell L2, hit Control Shift down arrow on the keyboard to select all the way down to uh, row 103 here, and then Shift right to select the additional column M. So essentially we're selecting from L2 to M103. You can do that with the mouse as well. And then I'm just gonna scroll back up to the top here. I'm going to go to the Insert tab on the ribbon, and over here in the chart section, under the pie charts, I'm going to select a donut chart because this is essentially just a modified donut chart. So I'm gonna move that over here onto the left side. We'll just resize it a little bit here into this area. And you can kind of see the outline here or the beginnings of our gauge chart. And really all we have left to do here is some formatting. But before we get to that, I wanna explain the setup of the source data. So one thing I'm gonna do real quick is just remove the uh, legend here, just uncheck the legend. That'll remove all the numbers at the bottom and just make this easier to see. So over here in our source data, we first have the gray column here. And this is just a column with ones in it. There's 100 ones, 100 rows of ones in this column. And that essentially represents all of the increments here on this inner donut. There's 100 increments going around half of the circle here. And to create the other half of the circle, if we jump down to the bottom of this column here, there's the number 100. And this is included in the source data. So if we jump back up to the chart here, that's this blue bar on the inside here that represents the other half of the circle. And eventually we're going to make this invisible and then rotate the chart so this will look more like a gauge. But that's how this is set up. Now for the color column, we also have ones here. But as you can see, we have this percentage complete here in cell P2, and that represents the actual percentage complete that we're seeing in the chart. As that changes, the chart will change. And so for this, we have just a simple if formula in this column, simple if function. Now, if you're not familiar with the if function, I do have a separate video that explains the if function in detail, and I'll put a link in the description below to that video. But really what this is doing here is it's just saying if the value in K3, so we have a one to 100 in this column, if that value is less than or equal to the percentage complete here, that percentage times 100 to give us the whole number, if that's less than or equal to, then the value of true, it's gonna return a one. Otherwise, the value if false is going to return 
a zero. So in this column here, you can see once we get down past 65, that's going to start returning zeros here. And then at the very bottom to make up the other half of that circle, we have the value of 200 minus the percentage complete. So that essentially gives us right now 135, and that's making up this larger circle over here. So we have 65 increments here, and then the rest of the circle here is the dark blue color. All right, so next we're just going to modify some formatting to turn this into a gauge chart. The first thing we're going to do is apply the colors. So I'm going to select the inner circle here, just left click it. If you have any trouble doing that, you can go up to the format tab and then on this drop down, choose series gray. And we're going to go to the format tab again and under shape fill, we'll just uh, apply a light gray fill here. And as you can see, that's filled this series gray. Now, another thing we need to do is just select this uh, bigger bar over here. You can just left click it. You might need to left click it twice if you clicked off of the series there at all. But one way you'll know you have the proper item selected is up here in the drop down on the format tab, it's going to say series gray point 101. And for that, we're going to change the shape fill to a no fill, and that'll just essentially make it invisible. And then we just need to repeat that for the color uh, series. So we'll select that here. Again, you can also go format tab and choose series color from the drop down here. And for the shape fill, uh, I originally used a green color, but you can use whatever color you want here to show the progress complete. So we'll just select that green color there. And then again, same thing. I'm gonna left click again on this point 101. Just make sure point 101 selected here. And then shape fill and choose no fill to also make that invisible. Next, we're going to overlap these two series. Now, in order to do that, we're first just going to select the chart. Then we'll go to the chart design tab and we're gonna choose change chart type. Now you might see this as pie chart as selected, or really it's the donut chart here. What we need to do is go down to combo. And we're going to change each of these because we don't want clustered column. We actually want to change both of these back to the donut chart. So just scroll down here to choose donut for the first one. And then same thing, scroll down to, and choose donut for the second one. And we also want to uncheck secondary axis for gray. And we're actually going to make the color uh, series the secondary axis. So this is the setup and you can see a preview of it uh, right here as well. So as long as that all looks good, we'll go ahead and hit OK. And since the color series is on the secondary axis, it's going to overlap the primary axis. And again, thanks to John Peltier for pointing this one out. I didn't have this in my original chart. And this just streamlines it and uh, makes it a little bit easier to create. So next we need to rotate the chart. And to do that, we're going to uh, select the chart, go up to the format tab here. We're first going to choose again, series gray. And then we can hit format selection right here. That'll bring up this pane over here. And we want to click right here onto the series options. And for angle of first slice, we're going to change this from zero to 270. So that's just going to rotate it back around 270 degrees. And you can now see that the gray series is kind of starting over here on the left. And we need to repeat that for the color series. So again, format tab, choose series color. And then over here on the right, we'll do the same thing. So instead of two, uh, zero, we're gonna type 270 and hit enter. And that will move that one over and overlap it as well. So you can now click off the uh, chart here and see that it's looking pretty good. But you, if you wanted to make the uh, bars either wider or narrower, you can do that. Well, first just select, just click on here to select the uh, color series. And again, over here on the right side, there's a donut hole size. So if you wanted to make, let's say the bars a little narrower, then I'm gonna change this to 65. The, the donut hole is gonna get bigger, the bars are gonna get smaller, so I'll hit enter there. And you can kind of see the green bars have gotten a little narrower. Now you also need to do that for the gray series as well. So you kind of need to repeat that process, choose series gray, go over here and put the exact same donut hole size in, 65%, and that'll just make uh, the bar a little narrower. And finally, we're gonna add the data label. And for that, we're going to use a text box because we don't really have any data here in the source data that represents the actual percentage complete of 65. So we're gonna use a bit of an Excel hack here with a data label. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just select the chart. Then I'm going to go to the insert tab under shapes. We're going to choose a text box. And then we can just draw it right here kind of in the middle of the and the bottom of the gauge right there. And for this, we can just select the outside of the text box here, go up to the formula bar, and we're gonna type equals, and then we're going to select cell P2. So that's gonna create this formula reference here to just cell P2 on this sheet. 
hit enter, and that's actually going to display that value here in the text box. And the nice part about this hack is that it's linked. So as this value changes, let's change P2 to 50%, just type in 50 and hit enter. You can see that the chart updates because our formulas over here in the color column update, and the uh, label updates here as well, because again, that's uh, linked to that cell. Now we can also quickly do some formatting here, maybe just bump up the font size a little bit here. I've also changed this to the same color to match the chart, make it bold. Of course, you can do whatever you want here with the styling, center it a bit, and then just kind of center it there at the bottom of the gauge, and it's starting to look good. And then one other final formatting note here, when you click off of the chart, you'll notice that there's a border way down here around it because we essentially have this invisible half of a circle down below. Now you can't really get around that in terms of resizing the chart, but one thing you can do is with the chart selected here, again, you can go up to the format tab and on shape outline, you can just change that to no outline. And then therefore when you select off of it, you won't see that space down here. And if you're putting this on a dashboard or a report or something, you you can put other elements of your dashboard over that blank space. And of course you could draw a square around it or a rectangle around it as well to just give it an outline. So that's an overview of how to create this gauge chart in Excel. I will be creating other tutorials for all other seven types of progress charts. So make sure you subscribe to our channel and get notified when we publish those new videos. Thanks again for watching, have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.